Circle Open Chat. Season 7 just took a turn. Some contestants are flat out lying and a new person has entered the circle and they are ready to disrupt. Send message. I like this little swap that they're doing with Rachel and Madeline. Turns out though that I was wrong about how it works, even though I think my way would have been a better way. So if one of them gets blocked as the other person, then they go home. Which is kind of weird because wouldn't someone notice that the opposite person was gone? I guess they would end up telling them is what would happen. Not gonna hold you though, my version of the game would have been better. It would have been so sneaky to just destroy someone's game and get them out. Like how cool would that have been? See how you can tell I watch a lot of Survivor? So Deb as Madeline is going fully in. Only good boys get dessert. Are you a good boy? Angel emoji? Devil emoji? Yup. I think that's what dessert would look like to Andy. She was worried about having to play an OF model, but she may have been one in her past life because I don't know, she's doing pretty damn good at it. I mean, she's full on talking about threesomes. All in all, they did a great job at pretending to be each other. No one suspected anything or was ever like, hmm, that was weird that they said that. Like, it was pretty smooth. And I actually think Deb did a better job at playing Madeline than she did at playing Rachel. They even teamed up to blindside Andy, which is crazy because it actually ends up working out and I never saw that coming. And Andy Heather does not take it well. Like, she seems genuinely like pretty upset that she's going home. Yep. <laughs> but she goes to see Madeline and they end up loving each other. Meanwhile, Madeline is the entire reason that she's going home and Heather Andy thinks that it's because of Gianna and Madeline doesn't even have the decency to tell her like, uh, nah girl, actually it was me. Like I literally set up the entire plan to get you blocked. But I do love a good blind side. I, I kind of, I, I did enjoy that. I can't lie. But you know what? Jadeja makes a good point. I want this to show that strategy is not the only way to win this game. You still have to play with your heart. You still got to be genuine when it counts. You do have to keep in mind that you got to do both of those things. Strategic, yes, strategy is gonna help you. But like I've said time and time again with the circle, these people are very much emotional players. So you have to keep that in mind. And really this entire cast needs to be watching out for Madeline. She, I said that she was a silent storm and she is proving that she is exactly that. I'm actually very, very impressed with how easily she's able to get people on her side and to get people to believe what she's saying. She does it with little to no effort. Fabricating an entire lie off the top, like on the spot about Darian is crazy. Getting someone to believe that is even crazier. But you know what? She concocted that plan with the right person because Kevin is desperate for any type of alliance that he could have. If she would have tried to do that with somebody else, maybe it wouldn't have worked. But Kevin is like, please, can I have a crumb of friendship? Can I have a crumb of alliance? So it worked out for, <laughs> it worked out for them or really worked out for her because Kevin's being used. Now the piece that she's having a little bit of problem with is getting people who aren't desperate for an alliance to believe her. Cause the other half of the circle is not by anything that she's saying. Hey, hashtag circle fam, it's Nay. Welcome back to my little corner of YouTube. This video will contain spoilers for the circle season seven episodes five through eight. So if you haven't seen them yet and you do not want spoilers, save this video and come back after you do. You are about to hear my thoughts on episodes five through eight, but of course I want to hear yours. So feel free to drop your thoughts below. If you do want to participate in the conversation and give this video a like before you go, so I know you enjoyed it. If you want to keep the conversation going after this video, feel free to head on over to my discord server. It's a place for us to chit chat outside of YouTube. The the link is in the description box. Now, funny enough, Darian has a really, I mean, very good read on people. And that's also kind of impressive because I don't know if I would be able to have such a good read on people virtually like, virtually like this and never having seen their facial expressions or knowing their tone of voice or anything. You don't go, there's nothing to go off of except this profile and these text messages basically. So Madeline makes up this lie about Andy telling her that somebody was being shady, but that Andy didn't tell her who it was. And right away, Darian was like, aren't you his hashtag circle wifey? Why wouldn't he tell you who it is on his way out? Like it, there's nothing for him to lose at this point. So why wouldn't he tell you? I mean, he caught that lie real quick. To sound right that he wouldn't drop names with his hashtag circle wife. LOL, but Heather's personality does seem sweet. Don't think that she would be the poster. Ew, ew, Darian. Darian is kind of alluding in his message that I'm making everything up, which is true. But like, we don't need anybody else to think that. And this is something else that I've noticed with contestants on this show. Someone will say, hey, uh, that thing that you just said, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And because people so heavily, heavily, heavily rely on their relationships in this 
game show because they need the ratings. They won't even question the fact that this person could be making all of that stuff up. Madeline literally has Kevin in the palm of her hand. And he's like, there's no way she would lie to me. Like, I know that my source is amazing. And it's like, your source is, y'all know like the fountain of youth? She's like the fountain of lies. Like, that's your source. But because she swooped in there at a time he so desperately needed an alliance or needed someone to even give him the time of day, he's gonna hang on to every word she says. And she knows that, so... She's a smart player. And it's crazy to watch this play out as a viewer because of course we have the full picture, but the contestants only have their sliver of what they think is the truth. So for them, it's like, they don't know any of this stuff, but still we yell at our TVs because we're like, how do you not see that this person is playing you? But I gotta remember that they don't see all that. So I think Darian tried to be the disruptor every single time that disruptor was offered to him. And he finally gets it and it could not have come at a better time because Madeline is very successfully plotting against him. He has probably one of the, I mean, all of the disruptor things have been more or less pretty good. But he gets to decide who the second influencer is. Do you know what kind of power this man is holding with that? Like that is, that's probably second in line to being immune. Like that's pretty damn good. It's just such an amazing opportunity that he completely squandered. When it got down to the top two and it was in between Gianna and Kevin, ironically, two of the catfish, I was literally on the edge of my bed. I was like, this, whoever gets number one spot is going to be very significant because these are two people who are playing on two completely opposite sides of the circle because right now the circle is kind of divided. Kevin happens to be on the side of Madeline who is actively going against Darian. Diana and Darian have been pretty much locked in besties since the beginning. This is a really pivotal moment in the circle. He got so lucky that Gianna got that number one spot. All he had to do was go ahead and put Jadeja in the number two spot. Why was he acting like that wasn't the obvious choice? I'm really still sitting here scratching my head trying to figure out why in the hell he chose Kevin. What is the motive for choosing Kevin? Kevin didn't say not one word to defend you when Madeline was coming at you in the group chat. Why is he even in the running to be number two? And to be honest, even if Kevin never flipped on him, the only and obvious choice still would have been Jadeja because she is sitting here telling you that she likes you, y'all circle hubby, circle wifey. Why wouldn't that be the person? She's never given you a reason to think that she's lying. So why wouldn't that be your top pick? I audibly yelled at my TV. Is he stupid when he picked Kevin? And see, when I see stuff like this, this makes me think that some of these decisions are being producer led because choosing Kevin is such an idiotic decision that I have to think that it's producer led because I can't believe that he did that on his own. Like, I don't want that for him. There's no way that you made that decision on your own. You had to have a producer telling you like, this is who you're gonna pick or else I'm just not seeing it. Completely unrelated, I was yelling when Darian was tucking his toes. He said, y'all are not getting his toesies for free. It's kind of crazy that that's where we are as a society. Like, free toes are a thing. Well, so now we're left on this crazy ass cliffhanger with Gianna and Kevin being the influencers. And at this point, I'm like, did no one watch the last season? Because I said this the last batch of episodes with Kevin. When you are the number one influencer, at the end of the day, you have the final say on who is getting blocked. Last season, when QT was number one, I forget who else was in the influencer spot with her, but basically she was like, well, we disagree. I'm not gonna argue because I'm the number one influencer and at the end of the day, I'm the one who has to make the announcement, which is true. So I'm the one who has the final say. And she pretty much went the way that she wanted to go. Did y'all I watched last season y'all have that power as the number one influencer so why are you sitting here going back and forth with Kevin thank him for his time thank him for his input and keep it pushing now this was a crazy few episodes and we even had a new bombshell enter the villa in the form of Tierra. and I am so happy he's ready to play now he's promising to be messy and I'ma hold him to that now look some of y'all might disagree with me because y'all might say I'm playing the race card or whatever, but this is my experience and this is a true experience. Tierra is missing out on a very easy alliance with Darian and Jadasia. As a black person, you walk into a room or into the circle and you see two other black people, why would you not jump to make that an alliance? And I get that other races, probably particularly white people might not have that sense of community, but being a black American is a shared experience. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna have at least a, a thread of an experience that you have shared just because you both, or all three in this case, grew up black in America. Like that is a shared experience. To me, that's such an easy first alliance. So the fact that Tierra didn't approach Darian and Jadeja with some type of black excellence alliance is kind of crazy to me. It's such a ball drop on Tierra's part, but time will tell. On a side note, I loved hearing Jadeja tell Garrett all about her story because obviously her story is my story. Jadeja, 
I was homeless for a period of time before I went to a group home. I knew I couldn't go back to the different forms of abuse and violence I grew up around. Hashtag, but I'm still here. And yet again, the circle had me in my feels. I'm just really ready to get to these next episodes. I don't think that Gianna is here to play with Kevin, so Darian better count his lucky damn stars. I, of course, will be here next week to discuss episodes 9 through 12. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, let's get all these going. Pause that. No, I should delete that and. Let's do that. Okay, okay. We are on Darian. I knew Darian was next. This hashtag surf oh, Lord. And until then, until then, Intended. I ain't got nothing to prove. I ain't even tough like that. You don't want to leave me alone. I'm not going on. Not should have known. I might have to fight this.